Hi, and welcome back to CVC Interviews. My name is Joyce Vaudre from Vernon. Uh, one of the reasons I always say I'm from Vernon is because of my accent. People don't really believe me that I'm from here, so that's what I say. Uh, tonight, we have another one of my favorite people. His name is James Batiste, but I call him Jim. So that's how I'll refer to you for the rest of the evening. Um, Jim's here to talk about one of my very favorite subjects, which is acting. Um, Jim and I have known each other for a couple of years now, and we have really found um, you know, a common desire to be on national TV and in film and national commercials. And I've talked about my journey into acting several times here in this format, but I really wanted to talk about Jim and his journey, specifically about I heard you're getting flown to South Carolina in a couple of weeks. North and Carolina. North yeah. Carolina. North Carolina. They're flying me down. They're giving me the treatment. That um, is awesome. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, so, thank you. With you. Uh, I like the fact that you use movie references. Right up until just a few seconds ago, you said, oh, we're going to Tarantino this. <laughs> and what that meant to me was you tell the end of the story, and then you do the rest of it in flashbacks. Yeah, absolutely. I love Tarantino films. I think this segment would be great for that, right? So awesome. wanna, we brought up my North Carolina movie. Yes. Can you tell us the name of the project, or is that under wraps right now? I, I'm still under an NDA. Okay, okay. Um, I'm under contract with Skyline Productions. Okay. Uh, it's a great company. It's a great film. It's a very heartfelt film. Um, I believe I got cast in this because it was really personal to me. Really? Right? It's, uh, I was, I'm a veteran, as yes. you know. And uh, it was a more, it's more along the line of that mental health crisis that we're having. Yeah. Right? And that's probably about as much as I can go into okay. that right okay. now. So but, I, I like that you said NDA. Uh, I was recently reminded that sometimes I talk with too many technical terms. So an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement that you sign as a talent. Uh, for a project that you can't talk about the project until it's made public by the production company. Correct. Okay, so that's why yes. I knew to ask you, can you talk about it yet? So no, you can't, that's okay, I get it. Um, how did you get there? So you mentioned you are retired from the military. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you retired and you're like, okay, I'm an ex-Marine. What am I gonna do now? What did you do? So, well, actually, I retired. I actually became a private investigator, of all things, right? Okay. And, uh, for, for, if you don't know, I sat in a car for eight hours a day by myself, very, very bored. <laughs> and, I, and all I had were my thoughts. So, really, it started probably day three on my first case. <laughs> you last three days? Okay. Well, I lasted okay. over a year. Okay. Before and, uh, you start questioning, though, you were like... Well, no, I, I, like, day three on my first case, I'm sitting there, and I'm, just, you know, you're alone with your thoughts, you're staring at a house, and I'm like, God, you know what? I've always wanted to try acting. Like, I've, I watch movies, I love movies, you know? I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. I yeah. want to be on TV, you know? I, I'm going to give it a shot. So I literally just Googled how to become an actor. Yes, I've done that. Yes, yeah. And it sent me to you. It sent me to a, a, a casting agency where they, they, they welcome me aboard. They train me. Yep. Right? And I gave me lessons and then sent me on my way and let me loose to being flown to North Carolina. <laughs> so I, I do want to come back to um, the company that we met at um, JC Modeling and Acting Agency of Connecticut. And they do offer um, some training programs and they can get you set up with casting. So that's an, that was an excellent step. Uh, but like everything, you gotta, you gotta still have the skills. You know, they can only train you so well. So you came with some skills. You also came with uh, a formal education with uh, which college did you go to? Uh, it was a Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All right, a lot so, of people know that one. I was, a, you know, I went to school for broadcasting. I'm, uh, I actually became a reporter for uh, on my part time volunteering for a small station. So I was a reporter for Sullington TV. So you're trying all different things. I just want to be on television. Right? I just want. <laughs> I, people... know <laughs> I know the feeling. I just want people to know who Jimmy Batista. You I know? got and you. Because I, I think they deserve it. They I do. Mean, they do. <laughs> So you are a podcaster. Yep. Um, you have a very interesting podcast that usually goes live on Thursdays. 
and um, that's uh, United We Stand. Divided. Divided We, we stand. stand. I'm sorry, Divided We Stand. And uh, tell me a little bit about the dynamics there because podcasting, people don't think of that as, it's, it's not acting because you don't have a script, but it's part of that whole entertainment industry of being interacting with other people. So you have your partner, but you also have calling guests. Yes, we do. So tell so, me a little bit about your podcast. So the podcast is, its number one, it's a lot harder to do a podcast than people think it is. It's not just getting in front of your laptop and talking. No, it's right? not. It's not. Like, mm -hmm. I, I probably spend 14 hours before the show preparing for it, you know, getting researching topics. Number one, you got to know what you're talking about. Yes. Right? And then signing guests, getting guests on, making sure that they're in line with the show, making sure they're actually going to flow with the show. If you book them for 10, 15 minutes, which doesn't seem like a long time, yeah. but when you don't have them there for that 10, 15 minutes, when they cut you off, like, oh my God, I got to go at five. And you're like, well, what do I do for the next 10? Oh, I could fill it for you. You call me. I could fill it. Yep. You, this, you have but... filled it, Joyce, <laughs> right? You've filled it in a way, not presence, but you've made, you've helped me be, develop my improv skills where, which I mean, you're going to be an actor. It's one of the more important things, be able to improv. Yes. But, uh, and, and so for the next 10 minutes, I'm able to improv, right? My co-host is a radio personality anyway, so he is already pretty good at improv. So now on the podcast, when we get stood up or something, we can just flow. And it's, I, I attribute, if anybody's watched my podcast, they know I attribute everything to you. I really <laughs> well, do. Well, thank you. It, it, uh, Sophia Sinika and I have talked a lot about uh, coaching and what is it that we see and what do we do. You can't really quantify it. It's just something that from the first time I saw you in my class, just the way you were able to interact with the other students from the get-go. You know, you need to have kind of that type of personality uh, to be noticed in the industry because when casting directors and agents are looking for actors, they're not just looking for the best actor, but I got to spend 12 hours on the set with this guy. Oh God. Yeah. So they want to be with someone that they can, you know, be engaged with or be positive and upbeat and great energy. So you brought, you bring that naturally, but now you know how to turn it on when you need it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so in the Marines, they teach you to act, right? They, they really do because you yeah. have to be able to hold, but they teach you the reverse. Right, you to can't. Stifle. You can't hold emotions. You right. or can't show emotions. Right, right. So now you have to act like everything is calm and cool on the surface, when underneath it, it's just like little duck feet. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I mean it's it's going yeah. a mile a minute. <laughs> but and so you they they teach, they train you the exact opposite way you should be trained. So for me to come out and be to try this, I mean it was, number one is a huge huge challenge for me, and the only way I was able to. Uh, uh, even can try to continue, right? To be motivated to continue was your encouragement, your help, <laughs> and the results that I was being, uh, I was being uh, uh, given the parts that I was being given. I'm just like, oh my God, Joyce told me about this. You know, I had to do this little tweak on a part that yep. a director, you know, a director will always, a good director normally will make you do two takes, right? Because yes. they want you to, they want to see. If, like you were talking about, if they want to see if they can work with you for 12 hours a day. Oh, yeah. So can you take direction? Yes. Right? That was a big one that I had to learn. Right? Yes. So. Because you, you, you have to make an actor's choice. How am I going to play the role? And then you get to do it, whether it's in an audition or on set. But what I like to tell my talent is, guys, sometimes they don't even know what they want until they see it. So if you show them something they've never seen before, they might say, do that again. Or, I like that. Can you do it faster or slower? So that was what you excelled at, was I would give you the coaching. I'd say, all right, I like what you did. Now do it a little different. And you came back right away with something different. So those are the skills that you have that a coach can work with and, and say, okay, let's develop this part of it. So what, it's, it's what, was the, what was one of the first gigs you did? After I said, yeah, you can do this. Go ahead. Go apply. Go, go. What was one of the first ones you my did? My first acting job, I was actually, uh, my first live audition. My first audition was live. And in the era of COVID, that's rare. That was, that was rare. I so mean, I was So I was surprised. scared, right? Yeah. Because I was expecting self-tapes. Yeah. Right? But no, they're like, oh, can you come in for a live audition? I was I'm, thrilled. I couldn't wait to hear. I was like, all right, sure. Yeah. And I went in. I did this student film, 
right? And I uh, applied or, or auditioned for a role of this police officer in a student film. And I ended up getting picked over six different other people my very first gig. And you want to know what they said stood me apart? What? The coaching that I got from you specifically when it came to eyeline and not moving out of focus or out of frame too much. Not, you know, I, I, you taught me to be uh, animated like uh, you are. <laughs> animated. And you, you know, you want yeah. to be able to, you want people to read your emotion on your face. Yeah. But you yeah. can't be doing one of these because you know you're on, you're not yeah. in frame anymore. Yeah. And that's, you know, being Italian. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. And that's, that's taking direction well. And you taught me. And then they said that I was the most professional. Even though it was my first one, I was the most professional person that auditioned. My slate was perfect. My, uh, you know, I took direction well, and I attribute that all to you. Oh, thanks, I say Jim. that every time, oh, and I will. <laughs> so uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, you were very thrilled to tell me about one of your roles that you were bumped up from background to featured background. Yes. On uh, one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, I, Gossip Girl. Love it. I, 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 was, I started off as a background actor, as a police officer. Yes, again, typecasting, Type, ex-military oh, oh. police, yeah, the you crew got cut. The haircut. But it's also the, the uh, I'll talk later about that, but it's it's just your, the way you hold yourself, and that's part of your military training. Oh, yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah. You know, it's just who we are. Yeah, but, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was there for, I was on set all week for five days. Yep. Right? So day one, day two, day three, I'm doing my background, and all of a sudden the director remembered who I was. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you a little bit about that real quick, right? Day one, I, they, as a background actor, you don't talk to the director, you don't talk to the major talent, right? you just do your part, and yep. that's it. The director came and sat next to me during lunch. All right? He came sat next to me. I would be so dorking out, okay? I, I sat there, I was like... <laughs> and all of a sudden, he looked over, and he was like, hey, man, what's up? And he sounded discouraged. Like, I was, he was down. I was like, sir, how you doing? My name's James Batista. You don't seem too happy today. How's it going? <laughs> And he laid it out. He like he. I think he just needed somebody to yeah. vent to, so he just went. So after that, anytime he needed a cop, hey, where's that Jim Batista guy? Get that Jim. Batista. And then all of a sudden, it came time for the big ending scene yeah. where the cops got to bust down the door. And guess who's busting down the door? Awesome sauce. Yeah. You networked within the movie. You that networking is crucial yeah. Yeah. in this industry. But you followed the directions. I it, that was one of the things that I they didn't teach me this, but. Just re everything I read about it, when I finally got on set somewhere where I was background, I gravitated towards the people like me that were quiet when we're supposed to be. I was overly anxious to get on set every time to get back on set. So I listened. I used to listen to the walkie talkies so that when the production assistants were being told, gather background, I would already have my crap all gathered up. Boom, person, OK, I'm ready to go. First one there. <laughs> It was, it was a great way I learned a lot of the terminology and understanding what they go through in production with the production assistants. But it's things like that that you, it's hard to teach it in a classroom, but if I can at least help someone understand these are the things that can happen, then they're prepared for them like you were. Oh, absolutely. I, it, you'll be surprised. Like the, so people might not even know this. Like the director doesn't really talk to anybody no. but the stars. The yeah. major, major. Yeah. Their assistant director, the major. The yeah. first AD, and then the second AD really yeah. is messing with all the extra people. Oh yeah, they're the right? ones. Yeah, yeah. The first AD handles all the the major crew people. Like, hey, we get the shot ready, blah blah blah. But the second AD is out there just running their butts off, man. And it's funny sometimes. They do. They just run their little oh, butts yes. off, and they're making everything happen. Now, were you also on? Um, you were also on Miss Maisel too. Yes, I am. And uh, how did you get the Miss Maisel gig? Where I, Grant Wilfrey. Okay, so Grant Wilfrey, that's that GWCI, and they're a great casting company based out of Connecticut. Um, I think they either have offices in New York. They do or, have offices in New York. Offices in New York, but they pull a lot of talent from Connecticut. A lot. Yes. And they, and they have big shows. They do. They do. Billionaire, Billions, what was that show, Billionaire? I didn't watch it. I don't know that one, but... Uh, but yeah, they do they do huge productions. Yeah, so as a new actor in Connecticut, because this segment is really talking about um, if you want to be an actor, specifically in Connecticut, what are some of the things you can do? So 
Oh. What did you do before you, I know you didn't get headshots. I know, I know the week you got your first headshots. <laughs> what did you do for these gigs before you got your headshot? So I, a lot of the casting uh, casting websites that are out there, the Grant Wilfrey, mm -hmm. uh, a couple other ones, uh, Backstage yes. is one, and uh, Boston Casting. You can sign up for these and not have to pay, right? So you can look for gigs and you can look for castings. Yep. And you can actually submit them without pictures and headshots, and sometimes you'll get a call. Sometimes yeah. you might not. Facebook is a great way right now. I, I have been talking that up a lot because people don't think of Facebook as a tool for a job. But in the entertainment industry, it's all networking. So whether the networking is via Facebook strictly alone, whatever, or, or it's, it's supplemented. Um, I see great castings. Uh, I recently forwarded a casting notice for somebody I know doing a short film. Um, I believe you were networking with the director from the previous segment and that you guys were talking about doing a production together. He's, he's, uh, he likes the way I look and he wants me to audition for uh, a, a part. I don't know if I can tell you the part yet, but uh, well, yeah, no, that's he, asked right. me, he asked me to audition for a part, yeah. And so how do you find that you're more likely to tell people you're an actor now than you did a year ago? Uh, a year ago, I didn't tell anybody I was an actor. I didn't. No, I do, actually. I, I actually I put it out there on uh, LinkedIn. I think I put actor Very good. under my title and my Facebook and all that. And uh, because I, I feel like I've just grown, you know, and uh, I feel like I can do it now. I know I can. Well, you're in the groove. Like, you're doing what you like to do. So um, you are also able, you have a very flexible schedule. So one of the problems I had when I first started was I had the type of job that I couldn't really take time off. Um, so that really restricted me in, in doing things that who knows what would have happened. I don't know. But we all have to you know, pay the bills and do things to do right. that. So I understand um, you are married and you have two children. So you do a lot of the child care at home. Is that correct? I do. And yeah. does that, that must help you with your flexibility. It, it does. I mean, number one, if you're married, a supportive partner, Mike, I know. you. Uh, yeah, I know. You know you, I couldn't do it my guy. <laughs> it is so crucial. And, uh, but, you know, it, yeah, my wife works full time. My mm -hmm. schedule allows me to be home with the kids. And you know what's great about that is I get to practice. I get to read scripts and yes. I get to read my, and I get, and I just practice and I try to become, just get better every day. So when you're practicing your lines, that, that's an, uh, another hurdle for a new actor. Yeah. Uh, they get intimidated by it. What are some of the tips you would have that worked for you? Because not everything works for everybody. So like what works for me may not work for somebody else. What works for you when you're learning new lines? So uh, what worked for me, I, it actually took me a couple times to figure out exactly what worked for me, mm -hmm. and I stole this trick. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to take credit for it. But I stole it from a, uh, a very famous actress. And uh, I was actually in a film with her. Cool. And uh, I can't say another NDA, but I'll tell you a former film that this person was in. OK. It's Fifty Shades of Grey. OK. As an actress wise. And what I, gotcha. I saw her doing yeah. is she wrote down the entire script in a notebook. She had a notebook per script. And she just rewrote it. Number one, that helped me commit it to memory. Mm -hmm. I, when I rewrite things, that's what I tell all I my can, talent. I remember better. Yeah. I remember a lot better. So that's tip number one. Just rewrite the whole script. Rewrite. Number one, you can't just remember your lines. If you just remember your lines, you're, you're screwed. You have to remember all the lines. Well, don't be scared, folks, now. because oh. I know what you're saying, though. I, I, I understand what you're saying about you need to know what's going on in the entire scene and all the different scenes, but you need to know what leads into your lines. Like, if you just memorize the words and phrases you need to say, but you don't know what your cue word is, you're then what are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to be lost. Right. right, so you do need to understand and kind of know what your, your cue is. So, so I color code. So nice. after I write... I use color coding too. After I write yeah. the entire script over, yep. I color code my lines green. Like, I'm always green. You can pick whatever color you want, but I'm always green for go. Oh, I like that. Right. Green for money, green for go. That's right. I didn't even think of the money. There you go. Now you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I always put yellow as the line before me. Yeah. Oh, I Caution like is coming up. Oh, I like that. And everything else I highlight in either like a light red, right? So yeah. it's not insignificant. Yeah, yeah. It's there, but it's not that I have to 
commit okay. that to me. I haven't done that. I, I X out most of the lines that aren't mine. But I, I do leave the ones that are leads in. I do leave those so I can look at those and know what they are. But rehearsing lines with a partner really does help too. Yeah, oh my, it's, yeah. again, my wife will help me. Yeah. It, it's hard with my wife. Do your kids read yet? <laughs> my daughter does. There you go. She's not, she wants to be an actor. She might be coming to talk to you soon. <laughs> okay. But yeah, she, uh, you know, it's hard though. Like I want to call somebody like you. I need to be able to call somebody like you more readily because my wife doesn't she, act. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, so today we're going for a walk. And then my line is like, but it's raining. You know, and I, so it's hard to feed that energy off, you know, off each other when you don't You have. can call Michael, too, because yeah. my husband, he'll, he likes to give it to you now. He gets oh. in the character and he goes at it. I, I so, like it, buddy. So he's, yeah, so <laughs> he is an, a ham. I need a male one coming up, actually. I think I have a, I just got an audition request Maybe today. I'll give him a call. I will give him a call. So as a new actor, you found work from Grant Wolfrey, and was that through um, Facebook or was that through Backstage? Uh, actually, Grant Wilfrey has its own yes. website. But How'd I, you find out about him? Google. Yeah. I go, I, it's the information. Hey, I, so, everything's and, at the tip of your fingers. Google. And the great thing about being in Connecticut I was going to say that. <laughs> right? This is what I found out as well. Okay. On the backstage yes. uh, uh, casting website, you'll see a lot of New York local only. Yeah. And at first, I'm like, oh, God, I don't live in New York. But then somebody, I don't want to mention any names, told me that, no, 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 Connecticut is local, local. to New York. Yeah. So I started getting those. I've been in New York six, seven times uh, yeah. for shoots. And then I found out they were also local to the Boston region. Isn't that wonderful? So living in Connecticut is most advantageous. Choice. Oh, great word. Choice, mint, because you're local to, right. what is it, the second and third largest market right now? It's, it's amazing what's available when you realize it's available. So no idea, yeah. So being able to help talent understand that that alone, that that's available to you, is a great asset. It's one of the reasons that Sophia and I are the talent coaches for the New England Talent Showcase, not just for actors, but also for models. Because even models who live in Connecticut don't realize that you can book work in Boston and New York and be called local. As long as you can get yourself on set for that audition and then the gig or the, the, the go-see for the modeling world, they, they'll go, oh, yeah, you're, you're local. I love it. I so do. getting local talent access to national work is one of the things I really want to do. So I'm, I'm rooting for you like you, you can't believe to get more national stuff. And I love it. Thank Big you. I need, your, I need them. Thank you. I need all the, the help I can get. So tell me, um, a lot, we've got a few more minutes, but I'd like to know, you mentioned the improv class. What are some other classes you've taken, uh, whether it be a, a workshop or a, a multi-week class, that you really like that was beneficial? Oh, well, uh, the improv was absolutely beneficial. The yeah. one that I, this is just a personal choice. That's what I want to know. Like, I don't know if you even know that I was doing this. I've taken stunt training now. I've oh, my doing, God. Yeah. i got to see your resume. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I've been doing stunt training up in uh, Massachusetts. Okay. To, so now I can do all the fight choreography, getting slapped in the face, getting punched. Uh, I, one of the auditions because of that is for a television show where I get stabbed in the back with a knife. That's awesome. So, so who's your coach for the uh, stunt coordinator? Uh, he's a, his name is Brad Watts. He's a producer. He owns his own production company. He's a trainer. He's a martial arts instructor. He's out in Boston. Cool. So, yeah, he's a great guy. Former Marine, so that's why him and I Semper Fi. got along. Well so together. we got to get him, some, uh, get him some, uh, some coverage here. That sounds like a really cool training. I never thought to... Oh, recommend awesome. stunt training to people. I'm not going to do it at my age, but uh, that is an excellent tool in your in your uh, tool belt for that. Oh, it must have. I mean, there's a lot, like Law and Order, you know, all those. If you want to be like a day player, like you want to have like a speaking role, you're going to have to do some kind of light stunts, right? It always, it says it on every call. And if you're a day player or uh, So a day player is somebody like yourself who's not in the union, and is being hired to perform whatever acting jobs, whether it be background or a speaking role. Right. And a lot of times they'll call it a five and under. So if you get five lines or less, they also call them day players. So I was, uh, yeah, so the part I'm trying out for is a five and under, but it's still 
requires some kind That's of awesome. stunt training. That's awesome. And I have that now. So, and uh, you know, I mean, being in the Marines, I'm a weapons expert, so that always. So, do you good. have to keep up on the training on that, like the weapons expert? Do you have to like get certified or? I, yeah, I, you do. I do. Yeah. I, I do. Like, it, it, well, it's just like acting. You it know? does. It does really help to have. You want to keep up on all your certificates on everything. You want to keep up like just like on your headshots, right? You want to keep up on all your headshots. You want to keep up on all your acting classes. Hey, I'm taking another acting class starting on Tuesday, and that's just a personal one-on-one -on -one session. Oh, nice. Try to get me, uh, we're calling it the Fix My Face class. Okay. So, is, is that because you struggle with your headshots? I struggle with, I want to be more, actually, yes, I struggle with my headshots because I don't think I'm a very photogenic person, but I'm really focusing now on, I want to be a drama actor. Okay, and you're very animated, so that's going to be... Extremely challenging. Yeah, I, I like that you're taking on new challenges. Yeah, I, well, I well, love it. I'm, I'm thrilled you came out to talk with us tonight. I'm glad to follow your career, and of course, I'm always there for you. If you have any questions, um, I could, yeah, sure, I could read lines with you. We've, we've uh, read lines over the phone, and um, I think I scooped you up for a Zoom call at one point, but... Um, I also want to thank you for being part of the team of the showcase and helping other actors learn about cold reads and the improv. Uh, people Great think time. just because you have a script, you still need to be able to improv on so many levels. So I, I really appreciate you sharing that, and I want to hear more about your martial arts training. Oh, well, so absolutely. That'll, that'll be really cool. And the weapons, too. I didn't know you had, I, I, I don't know why I didn't know that. You were in the military, so... We'll have to talk more about that. Well, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thanks Hopefully for having talking me. talking to you soon. Good Absolutely. luck. Well, thank you all for joining us uh, here at CVC Interviews. Here we don't just watch TV, we make it. So give us a call here at the station if you want to learn more about using the equipment in the studio, uh, in the control booth, or here on the side of the desk. I might have to fight you for hosting duties, but I'll share. So again, thank you for joining us. Joyce Vaudre saying goodnight.